Hello and welcome to this presentation on Active Sync, which I suggest is a new cool modern way to use emails. But before we start the main presentation, I'd like to give you a reminder about email security. Emails have a long way to travel between people. They start your email program and are sent to your email provider's server. Then that server tracks down the server of your recipient. The message is then passed to that server by the internet via many hubs, routers, switches and other devices. And finally the recipient will download the email from their server and your message has been sent. But there's one simple problem with this, and that is your email message is sent as plain text. That means that any device on your email server or your recipient's mail server, which has to transfer the email, will be able to read the entire contents, including any images and other attachments. A quick search of the more devious parts of the internet will give you a list of software designed to sit on devices on the internet and check any emails that pass by and these programs often look for keywords like password, username, pin, etc. and will then make copies of those emails for their controller. So please stop sending secure sensitive information via email. It's probably more secure nowadays to have this information sent by fax but better of course, of course, not to send it at all. You will notice many password recovery systems will try to avoid sending out passwords, giving you links to register or sending parts of the message by email and getting you to log on to complete the process. Because emails are not a secure way of sending information. If you send information by email and you want it to be secure, you need to encrypt that part of the message which has the secure information on it, either using a password protected zip file or maybe a, an encrypted PDF, although either of these could be hacked at some point in the future. The other way of sending secure information is to put it on a secure system like a password protected server from Google Docs or Dropbox or a similar online storage system. Then you can just send your person an email telling them that the secure document is waiting for them at their usual location. Because emails are not secure. Okay, so I hope you have that message because I really would like you to realize that emails are not secure. And just a little comment for those people clever enough to know it's possible to have an encrypted connection between your email program and your email server. Dear clever people, you are correct. You can have a secure connection between your email server and your email program and this is not only advisable but a great thing to do. However, it doesn't stop the email being sent in an unencrypted way once it leaves your email server. So unless you are sending to people on the same server as you within your same group, it will be read. But 8 out of 10 for coming up with a great idea. So there are four main ways of sending uh, your email and reading it. Uh, first one of course would be using something called webmail but we're not going to worry about that we're looking at email software so the traditional way that people send and receive email is something called SMTP POP3 and this is uh, SMTP for sending the emails out of your device and the POP3 method is that which downloads the emails back from your email server filling up your inbox. If you're using an older version of Outlook, Outlook Express, an older PC, uh, older Mac, then it's most likely you're using this method. If you're using a simple email service, perhaps acquired with your hosting program, it is most likely that you're using this method. All the emails are emptied off the server and downloaded on your device when you read them. You can, in one exceptional purpose, uh, leave copies of emails on the server in some advanced versions of Outlook and leave copies up there for so many days. And this is quite useful in the event of a system failure, that at least you have your latest emails backed up on the server. 
The main way for Office applications to connect, especially if they are Microsoft Exchange related, is something called IMAP. In this situation, the uh, devices should be on a network and all the emails are stored on the main server and referred to by each workstation program reading them off the server. But the emails stay on the server. It has been around quite a few years but Microsoft introduced a new method of email called Active Sync. What's cool about this is firstly it's written for mobile devices in mind and secondly it's very good at allowing people to access email on multiple devices at the same time and includes synchronization not just of the emails but of the contact list and the diary. So you know what methods of email communication are available, you should have a good idea of where your precious emails are being stored. And I suggest the first thing you do is now check what your backup procedures are and make sure you are backing up the emails on whichever device they are being kept. So let's have some fun with some graphics and have a look at a traditional POP3 SMTP way of sending emails with the aid of this animation. User on the left which should send an email to their friend and the email is uploaded to the email program via their email server. The email server finds and communicates with the recipient's email server and sends the email on its way. Remember, on its way anybody can read it. The email server uh, then waits until the connects and will then download the email to their machine and the transaction is complete. In the world of ActiveSync things are slightly different. The email is still sent to uh, the email server from the user. And the email is then sent from that email server to the recipient server and the email is stored on the cloud of the Active Sync server. It is the way the email is now used which differentiates this method from the traditional. Because we can now set up multiple devices to talk to the email server in the cloud. Each one will be able to communicate with the cloud and update its personal lists of emails, contacts and calendar. But ActiveSync takes this synchronization to the next level because all the devices will be regularly checking their list of emails, contacts and diaries are correct and if any device makes a change the others will find out very quickly. In my office I have an office laptop, a mobile laptop, an iPad and two mobile phones and they are all organized with my email. It's a little weird when five devices click or buzz whenever a new me email is sent to me but it does make life very easy. So let's look at this in more detail. My entire email folder is synchronized across all devices. That includes email inbox, outbox and any folders I've created. In fact any email apart from draft emails. My entire contact list is also synchronized and all appointments and events on my calendar as well. Obviously, any email applications need to be able to support Active Sync method. And this means older versions of Outlooks do not work. You need a version of Office 365 Outlook. Outlook 2010 does not support this feature. The Mac version of Outlook is currently a version of 2010 and therefore does not support this feature. But the inbuilt application for the iPad, the latest iPhones, will allow active sync synchronization to the built in diary address book and email program, so you don't need to add anything more to the system. And most modern Android devices also allow active sync and will communicate with the built in email, diary, and contact system. There is one uh, simple example I will give you of how active sync can change the way you communicate. Consider the situation when you're out of the office and a phone call comes in from a customer requesting a meeting with you. Firstly the phone should recognize the contact because it's got your contacts list synchronized. 
you can then check your diary because that is synchronized and confirm a date and time with your caller. You can make an entry in your calendar and also a quick email to the contact to confirm the appointment has been made. Now all this could be accomplished on your phone or maybe like me you would call, uh, take the call on your mobile phone and then use your uh, tablet or iPad to sort out the appointment and the email. When you return to the office the email that you sent out to the caller is in the outbox of your main computer and the appointment is in your diary program. Another example, I was recently at a business club meeting when one of the members asked if there was a contact who could provide garden maintenance services. I quickly looked up my friend Dean, whose business is garden maintenance, and passed the phone over so the member could copy the information and call him later. If you're an administrator or secretary working with you, it is possible that both of you could share your email, diary and contact list between you on multiple machines so you can work more closely together on projects. In my situation, I have two laptops, but they, one big one for the office and one I take around with me. They both share the same email contacts and diary. In conclusion, let's see what you need to use this service. So firstly you need an email provider that will support ActiveSync on their email servers. This can be uh, a Microsoft Exchange server, Outlook 365 service um, or Office 365. Other email providers may provide uh, ActiveSync as an option. We for instance have purchased this as an upgrade for our email server and it works very well. You only need ActiveSync on your email server, it doesn't matter what people are using as services at the other end. The more advanced email service is likely to be a premium service and not a standard option on a um, basic email provider. Secondly, you're going to need email software that can use ActiveSync as connection. Outlook 365 is probably the best solution. Um, the latest iPad, iPhone devices and Android devices all have options of ActiveSync in their built out application for email and this then copies across if you want to your contacts and your diary. You therefore will probably have to have a look at using Outlook and Office 365 if you are using an older version of Microsoft Office. You'll be surprised that Office 365 is now available subscription and for personal use it starts at around 60 to 70 pounds and for office use it's only a little bit more and therefore you can get not only ActiveSync available for your PCs but you also get the latest version of Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint and the like available too. So that's the end of my presentation. And I hope you think that uh, ActiveSync is a cool way to use email. We certainly do. And it saves us time and effort every day. Thank you very much.